Paul George suffered a very painful and concerning looking right knee injury on this play after hyperextending it when he came down. In this video, we're gonna walk through what exactly could have happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. Let's dive right into Paul George. This is of course a hyperextension. We can see here as Paul George comes down on his right leg, he lands first of all with a very straight and initially neutral and sort of full extension right leg. So that right leg is perfectly straight, landing on a predominantly flat foot. Now in this position, what George is wanting to do normally to cushion and brace his fall is drop this right knee into a little bit of flexion. Let the quadriceps, let the quad patellar tendon absorb some of that load from the fall and cushion his landing. Unfortunately though, he can't because the Thunder player has their right leg incidentally sitting here in front of George's right leg. And so there's nowhere for his knee to go, but in a hyperextended backwards direction. Now, some of this has to do with the fact that Paul's body weight is gonna be forward over the position of that leg as he falls. So if it's gonna go anywhere, you're gonna have a moment where it's gonna tip the body forward, push the knee backwards into hyperextension. When we talk about severity of hyperextension, one of the key factors is just simply the degree of hyperextension. So how far beyond neutral did you go? It's a little bit tough from this angle here, but if we sort of think of coming down and drawing a line, almost as if this was the straight continuation of the femur, we're gonna be talking about this angle right here. Some cadaver studies have been performed where they put a human limb into a machine and hyperextended it in a neutral plane to look and see at what point the major ligaments like the PCL, ACL started to fail. It tended to be around 30 degrees where we saw failure of at least the PCL. So hard to say exactly from this angle, you know, 45 if we think about there's 90, 45 is gonna be about right there, so we're potentially around that 30 degree angle. The other thing that matters is how much the knee moves inwards or outwards, because remember the ACL and the PCL are also helping to resist some rotational stability, and sometimes if we see the knee severely move inward, that might suggest more of an ACL injury. So here, hard to kind of see from these angles. It looks like maybe if anything, George's knee does go inward a little bit, kind of relative to where his trunk is facing. So if you think about the angle of his shoulders, the angle then kind of here of his hips, where that right leg is pointed, it does look a little bit to me like that knee has buckled inward as well as a little bit of hyperextension, which to me makes this a more concerning injury, at least visually based purely on the mechanism. Milwaukee fans avert your eyes because we're gonna look back at Giannis's injury because it's a great example of how sometimes a hyperextension can look severe, but end up not being that bad. Here, of course, we're looking at Giannis in his left leg and you can see when he comes down, that is a significant amount of hyperextension that Giannis's left knee sustained here. And if you remember, he only missed like a couple of weeks or something like that and really had no major structural ligamentous injury. So even though these look really bad, it's not always a guarantee that they're going to turn out to be as bad as they look. With our bi-digital anatomy tool though, let's walk through the structures and kind of correlate what we see on the footage of George with the anatomy. The first thing that we're gonna have around the knee is the knee capsule. It's this fibrous capsule that sort of lines the entirety of the joint. And of course, whenever the knee goes into hyperextension, you're gonna be pulling and putting a bunch of tension here on the posterior portion of the capsule. So it's very normal and almost expected to have a sprain or a tear of this capsule around the knee. Next, if we get rid of the capsule, let's talk about the ligaments and bone underneath. So here, of course, we've got the front of the knee on this side and then the back of the knee over here. When we look at what's going on over here with George, we can see how the front of the knee is going to be in some compression and the back of the knee is going to be in tension. So the front of the knee, the bones are pushing together and the back of the knee, it's pulling apart. What that means is a common injury we see with these hyperextensions is a severe bone bruise. The anterior portion of the femoral condyles smash down into the tibial plateau and you can get anything on the spectrum of some mild bone bruising to actual fractures where the bones impact hard enough that the surface of the bone breaks. That's usually the most painful part of these hyperextensions, just the severe amount of bone bruising from all the compression you get with the front of the knee smashing together. Now, of course, there's a big ligament on the back of the knee that we don't talk about too often called the oblique popliteal ligament. This thing usually, again, just gets pulled and torn when somebody has a hyperextension. And then we get to the big things. We get to the ACL and the PCL sitting inside the knee. To be honest, there's not a great way to predict unless you see severe varus or valgus load, which of these two ligaments might be torn. With George, there's absolutely a risk that one of them could be injured. This could certainly be an ACL tear that could end his season. This could be a PCL tear, something mild that might just require some rehab. But there's a very real chance that one of these two cruciate ligaments has been at least sprained or partially torn with the severity of a hyperextension when you also have what looked to be a little bit of that valgus position with the knee kind of moving inward with the load from the Oklahoma City player. 
A final thing to mention that we might see with the hyperextension injury is an avulsion or a tear of the hamstring. So we always think about the hamstring muscles with tears or avulsions happening higher up at the hip where the hamstrings originate. But remember, those hamstrings are coming down and the tendons are running along the back side of the knee. The semi-tendinosis and the semi-membranosis are gonna insert more on the medial side of the knee and the biceps femoris out here in the lateral side. But those are just as predisposed to getting stretched or pulled. And so it also wouldn't be surprising to see something like a hamstring injury or a hamstring avulsion because of that severe amount of hyperextension with one of the hamstring tendons potentially pulling off of its insertion down on the tibia. The question isn't, will he miss time? It's how much? Even if this is just bone bruising, that bone bruising can again result in an impaction fracture that can require you to be out for multiple weeks, if not months. Again, then if this is something like an ACL tear, we know how long that's gonna be. The hope here, best case scenario, is that there's no cruciate ligament injury, there's only a mild bone bruise and he can come back once that bone bruising calms down and he's able to run, jump, and play without pain and swell. But even then, I'd expect that to be on the order of at least a couple of weeks or so. We'll await the final word on George's injury, but hopefully this was interesting to walk through the video mechanism and talk about some concepts of knee hyperextensions. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.